Welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Today we start the show off with some highlights from our recent garden fest here at TBG. We then go visit the colorful formal gardens on OSU's campus. We will share our 2023 Oklahoma Proven Annual. Bailey demonstrates a thoughtful way to preserve our garden flowers. We'll show you what to do with your loofah gourds. And finally, I'll share a unique way to propagate a succulent. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today we're here at Garden Fest at the Botanic Garden at OSU. Welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. So whether it's Garden Fest or another event, there's always plenty of fun for your family at the Botanic Garden at OSU. Gardens on OSU's campus and joining me is John Stevens with Landscape Services and John is one of many that help contribute to making this formal garden such a beautiful place to visit. John, can you tell us a little bit about your secrets? I mean, it's just phenomenal. I know a lot of times you focus on orange colors, but this year it's an explosion. It's like a rainbow here in the garden. Yes, Casey. Well, this year we wanted to um, really highlight a lot of different plants, that annuals that you can put in the garden, um, just the different colors, all the potential that it could be, plants that would attract insects, um, and just really just have a um, season-long interest. And definitely a lot of insects. We've got hummingbirds and different pollinators flying around us out here. And even here. a rabbit. And even a rabbit, yeah. <laughs> so a rabbits kind of help prune a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about some of the ones that have just been phenomenal for you this year? Well, my personal favorite has been the uh, firebush. It's called lime sizzler. Uh -huh. um, it's this really vibrant color, uh, has some orange in it, some yellow. It's just really striking and we have it lining the center long beds. Um, it really just draws your interest when you uh, eyesight when you walk into the gardens. And it's uh, got the orange tubular flowers, mm -hmm. so definitely great for hummingbirds as well. Yes, hummingbirds love it. Um, another favorite of mine is the um, salvia, the rock in the blues is the cultivar. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want um, to attract bees in your garden, that's definitely the plant I recommend. The bees just swarm over and just love it. Um, really inviting to, for that insect okay. to come and, to your garden. And it's overflowing with long flowers on mm -hmm. it, about two to three feet tall it looks like. So mm -hmm. um, doing quite well for you. And we can't help but notice these periwinkles or vincas right here in front of us. I know you've got a couple of different kinds. Tell us about this one, first of all. Well, this one here is one of my favorites that we planted. It is from the Kauai series. Um, there's several different colors in there. There's blueberry and pink, um, um, red. I think we captured all the colors in the series. Um, for vinca, it seems to be one of the more hardier, hardier vincas, can handle the Oklahoma weather. Um, had a lot of rain during the June and July months this year. 
Um, as you know, um, Vinca don't like sitting in wet feet or getting very much overhead watering. So that was a challenge. But even though they went through all of that in the early summer months, they really bounced back, as you can tell. They're yeah. just really tough plant. They're looking phenomenal. And, and what I really love about this series is they have a much smaller flower, but mm -hmm. so many flowers that still get all that color impact, mm -hmm. but adds a unique texture compared to some of your traditional vincas. Yeah, behind me is the tattoo series uh, vinca, but this still has the same same challenges as the smaller flower. They, they don't like the setting in wet feet and the right. overhead watering. Um, and definitely... the tattoo has that kind of a darker eye to it, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously we've got some celosia, you mentioned some salvias. We can't help but notice there's also gomfrina behind us. Mm -hmm. Um, and the cannas, talk a little bit about those as well. Well, the cannas, we grew from seed. Is anyone that has ever had any experience with cannas, it's very difficult to grow from seed. You usually come in like a tuber or you just buy it as a plant. So we took a lot of pride in our cannas in the <laughs> garden because we have a lot more uh, vested interest in it from start to finish. And they're doing phenomenal. Mm -hmm. They really are. Thank you. And we also have the lantana. It's the um, Lucky series and this is Flame. It's really okay. vibrant. Uh, another plant that catches your eye when you walk into the garden. And... So I know one thing about lantana is it comes in a range of sizes. Have you guys had to prune this lantana at no, all? No, this one has been really self-sufficient. We haven't had to do very little tri trimming on it. Maybe there's a wild one that comes over the edge and to be able to keep it out of the pathway, but it's been very low maintenance. And... Okay, that's nice. <laughs> Getting the right plant mm -hmm. for the right place definitely mm -hmm. helps. Um, also, you've just got the whole garden punctuated with some Ornamental grasses, looks like purple fountain grass. Mm -hmm. um, adds a lot of texture and, and movement into the garden, right? It does. It, it, right today, it's a windy day, and you can hear the, hear the wind just cutting through the seed heads, real wispy sounding, very, very nice. Um, um, unfortunately, is an annual. It is an <laughs> annual. That reminds people that it's not going to survive our winters. Mm -hmm. here. Definitely won't like the Oklahoma winter, so it's just a, just a summertime plant, but it really loves Oklahoma. Um, does well in our summers, handles the heat. So I know this doesn't just happen by accident. This isn't just a, we went through the catalog, pulled some plants and it just, it worked out for us this way here. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about kind of the planning that might happen um, or how you guys go about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think many of your viewers will relate. Um, you visit nurseries throughout the year, or maybe the catalog shows up in the mail and you start going through it and you just make lists. Um, and that's kind of the same process with us, but we may take it a little a step further. We'll put it on spreadsheets and divide it up into color. And, and if you want to come with me to the garden, a uh, greenhouse garden, I can show you more of that. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay, see, welcome to Landscape Services Trial Garden. And it's here where we uh, decide what we are going to plant on campus. Um, this is kind of behind the scenes. This mm -hmm. is where y'all grow all of your stuff at, the, at your facility greenhouses, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So When we um, try to decide on what we're going to plant, I think that your viewers will relate to this process. It kind of starts out where we just go around town and we see, maybe go to the, a nursery or we get a catalog in the mail and we see a plant that we like or uh -huh. maybe a color that we like and we write it down and um, maybe hope to try it in the garden later but I think we take it a, a step further we'll we'll produce spreadsheets and uh, keep <laughs> keep track of those plants throughout the year um, and so you grow them here first any ones that you're new with or new, unfamiliar with, you kind of trial them here a little bit first? Uh, yes, we, we try that. Sometimes in the industry, we get sent plants by growers that they want us to try and, okay. we, we, like, and, and we like them and want to see how they would do. Um, usually we have like a wish list and maybe a color scheme we want to do. Um, and from our lists that we have saved, we'll produce little pictures on the screen and on the computer screen and see if we like those color combinations and maybe we'll go out and then find these plants and then that's how they wind up in our trial garden. Okay so it's literally kind of like an interior design you put a montage of photos together and see if it works. Exactly or not. but uh, we have to plan it out years in advance uh -huh. so we're already thinking 2025 20, okay. and so it's it's a it's a year-long process. When we have the trial garden then we get a specimen that we want to try we always plant a plant in a pot and then we also will plant it in the ground 
because we want to see how it does in Oklahoma's climate, which can be brutal uh -huh. with the heat, drought, and wind. We want to see how each plant will respond to what we are going to throw at it. Because if it fails, we want it to fail in our garden, not out on campus where all the students and everyone can see. Absolutely. And I noticed you've got a fair amount of like drought tolerant native stuff, which is also predominant on campus as well. It is. We're really trending toward, especially in our native plant corridor, a lot of hardy plants, uh, natives, um, things that can handle the drought. Uh, up here in my garden right now, we have Gara growing. Um, does really well in Oklahoma. It's uh, drought tolerant, handles the sun. Yeah, it's kind of past its prime right it now, but mm -hmm. normally it would be covered with white flowers or pink flowers. And um, yeah, it's, in, it's, in our trial garden, we tend to just let things go. We want to see what would happen if it's just, I wouldn't say neglect, but we just let it be free and, and grow how it wants to. Very, very minimal uh, interference from us. So we just want to see how it, how it will respond. All right, so some of the stuff we are seeing out here might actually be on campus in yes, a year or two. Is that yes, yes, right? definitely. And if you probably, I could honestly say that if you look in this garden, you'll see future formal gardens in this, but this is not pieced together yet. All so. right, so it's like looking at all of the paint before the artist does its work. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing this with us, John. You're welcome. Today we're highlighting our Oklahoma Proven Plant Selections for 2023, and this plant here is our annual. This is Cape Plumbago, or sometimes called Cape Leadwort. This is a native to South Africa where it is actually an evergreen shrub that grows six to seven foot high. But because uh, of not being cold hardy here to Oklahoma, we treat it as an annual where it more typically grows anywhere from one to three, maybe four foot high, depending on how it's grown and where it's grown. Now this is a beautiful plant with clusters of sky blue flowers that bloom all summer long. And they love the full sun. They are very tolerant of the heat and humidity. Um, I actually spent some time down in, in Houston, Texas at a, and worked at a garden center down there years ago. And we sold a lot of this stuff down there. So you know that it's uh, very tolerant of those types of growing conditions. So full sun and heat, not a problem for this guy. Um, it uh, can also have, there are some other cultivars that have some beautiful bright sky blue flowers, um, deep blue flowers, and there's a white flowering variety as well. Uh, the, the flowers are attractive to butterflies. Now this plant prefers um, rich, moist growing conditions, um, but it's pretty tough. Uh, it just needs well-drained soil, and even though it can be quite drought tolerant once it gets established, or somewhat drought tolerant, it does best with consistent moisture. Now this plant, if you want to keep it um, from year to year, it, uh, you can actually dig it up, or if you're growing it in a pot, you can take it indoors um, and keep it indoors for the winter, and then replant it out in the gardens uh, the next spring after the dangers of frost are gone. If you keep it indoors uh, through the winter, then you'll want to, uh, in late winter, go ahead and cut it back pretty hard to encourage new growth for the new season. As the garden season is coming to an end, that doesn't mean that you can't keep enjoying your flowers throughout the winter time. During the winter, we start to get a little antsy because we don't have all the plants outside growing and the flowers blooming. And all we can really do is plan and start seeds. But there is a way to enjoy your flowers throughout the winter months. And you can also share them with others as well. So right now is the perfect time to go ahead and start collecting some different plants, collecting different flowers and leaves and different things to start drying them, as you can see behind me. So there are several different kinds of plants that dry super well and are proven to help hold their color and their flower structure as they dry. So gomfrina, celosia, and straw flowers are just to name a few. And that's because of 
their um, structure of flower and structure in their stem. It's the reason why they dry super well. On top of those, a lot of, or some ornamental grasses and different herbs also dry super well. Um, I just learned that apparently this particular marigold that I also just dried, I was trying it out for the first time this season drying it, and it's held its shape so far really well. And you can hold these flowers for a while, but whenever you, before you get any of your flowers picked and ready to dry, you need to get your structure ready. So the first thing that I did was I hung up a string and then I got some rope ready to hang up my flowers before I picked any. So you wanna pick them in the morning, right before they open or right after the dew comes off of them. So you wanna hang them in a cool, dry place and you wanna keep as much light out of there as possible. You also wanna make sure there's good airflow and circulation so that way they don't get stagnant or have any mildew or mold growing on them as well. So now that you have your flowers hung up in a well air circulated area, you want them to stay there for about two weeks at the very minimum. The longer that you allow them to dry, the better that their flower structure is going to be true to what you'll have later on on your different projects. So as they're hanging and drying, you might want to spray them with some floral spray. Even hairspray works as well, um, just to help them stay and not fall apart as some different plants could. Besides just hanging it up as decoration, we've gone a step further and we've begun making crafts out of it. So one of the first crafts that we chose to do was making these little floral note cards. So we went to the craft store and bought different kinds of materials to use for our project. So we started out by getting this scrapbook paper and these different um, brown note cards. We also got some different colorful note cards as well and different kinds of paper. Uh, this floral tape was really cool and then some different stamps. So what we initially did was we made little tiny arrangements as you can see here and these have held up really well. I've had them in storage and I made these last year. So you can see how well dried flowers can hold up. Um, the initial thing that we did was we made these little arrangements and then we chose what kind of note card paper that we wanted. So on this particular paper, we just made a couple little slits. We put a sticker on it and then we hot glued it on the back. And you can see that right there. So if you wanted to hide this hot glue, you could take another piece of paper of the exact same kind. You could write a fun little note to whoever you're wanting to give this to and glue them to the back and you can have an easy front and back sided little note card. I know whenever I go to the store I do not want to pay the outrageous price for all the different um, cards that is kind of expected whenever you go and give somebody a gift. So these are a great substitute and they make them that much more special because you put time and effort into each one of these. So this is one of my personal favorites. We just threw some stickers on there. You could just write on it with a Sharpie and we cut it down to be a little square. So you can just place it right on top of a gift or um, whatever you're wanting to give to the person. And we bought these wax sticks and a little seal as well. And so we were able to stamp a little butterfly on it to give it a fun little decoration instead of just wax. So we can also do different kinds of things. You can draw on it, like on this mason jar. And we just threw this little sticker inside of it as well. And on this one, we also super glued on the back so the flowers wouldn't go anywhere. A really simple way to add flowers to these note cards is simply by using this tape. And it comes in all different colors, all different designs. You can see we have a rainbow of colors in this little bee right here. But that was super easy. We put this paper on top of this cardstock and just simply taped the little arrangements. So after I made all the note cards that I wanted to do, I had a lot of flowers left over. And so another thing that you can do is make different floral arrangements. With regular floral arrangements with fresh flowers, they don't last as long as you could want them to. So with this dried one, this is our, This is exactly what it's going to look like. It might collect a little dust, so you might get a new one later on. But this one is going to hold its shape, its color, and it's not going to fall apart as much as a fresh arrangement will as well. And so after I made the arrangement, I also had an extra jar. And I just took a bunch of the different flowers and grasses that I had left over. And I put them inside of this jar. You can add some oil inside of it to help give it a fun different look, but I just put these dried flowers in here. I made sure the jar was completely dry before adding them, so that way I don't get any surprise mold growing in there as well. 
And with that, this is a fun way to help preserve the beauty of your garden and you can share it with others throughout the seasons. If you grew loofah gourds this summer, you probably noticed that over time as they got older and more mature, they went from a darker green and then they got lighter and lighter until they finally ended up being a crispy brown. So at this point is when you want to harvest them, when they're crispy brown, unless you were going to eat them, in which case you'd want to eat them when they were like this. So when it gets to the crunchy part, you're going to take the skin off and the way you're going to do that is just by literally crunching it and then you can start peeling it. So when you finish taking the skin off, you'll have something that looks like this. And you'll also notice that it's filled with seeds that you can give your friends and neighbors. They come out pretty dark when they first come out of the uh, skin. So if you want it to look like the ones in the store or you want to look, make them look pretty for giving as gifts, you can soak them in bleach water for a while until they get bleached white. So if you grew loofah gourds this summer, this is how you can turn them into gifts for family and friends. I love sharing with you guys the cool things that plants can do and propagating plants is one of the funnest things to do in order to see how a plant can create a new plant. Um, a lot of times when we talk about propagation, we're looking at two different kinds. There's sexual propagation when we're talking about seeds and then asexual propagation, which is when we take a part of a plant and create a new plant. Now, a lot of times we're talking about cuttings when we're talking about asexual propagation. But today I wanted to share something different called vivipary with you. Now you probably have heard this if you've ever gotten an apple or a tomato that you've cut open and you've actually seen the seeds that have prematurely germinated in there. A lot of times they kind of say that that's vivipary as well because you truly have another baby plant growing on the mother plant as well. But it's a little bit kind of different. So today what we're showing you is true vivipary and the fact that we've got small plantlets actually growing while they're still on the mother plant. Now as the season's winding down, I happen to be walking by our patio garden here where we have a lot of succulents and cacti. And I noticed that our donkey ears, Kalanchoe or Kalancho as some people call them, um, were actually doing this vivipary. Um, and so this is a viviparous plant where it is producing these plantlets directly off of the mother plants. You'll notice that some of them have actually rooted already. Um, you can see that they do have tiny little roots growing on them. So it's kind of a cool thing that this plant does. This is one of the ways that it actually reproduces is by doing this. Um, later in the season and they sort of add you know a kind of a unique characteristic because they almost look like flowers with these kind of light gray rosette look to them as well on here you can see there's a couple of just baby ones that are starting here while these baby ones are too small to really do too much with at this point what we're going to do is show you how you can pot these up and take them in the house so if you look at these you've got some that are very small and what we're going to do is just go ahead, sometimes they'll break off, but we're just going to trim them off right here. Trim that little bit of the leaf and take it off. Now, because this is a succulent plant that likes kind of that arid condition, we want to have good drainage. You can see that they're planted here in rocky soil that's on a hill. We've got some sandy uh, potting soil here also, and we're just going to go ahead and tuck those in there and allow them to continue to root. So the nice thing about this, because this is a tropical succulent, it's actually native to Madagascar. So it's only native to, um, or hardy to zone nine. So otherwise, if we wanted to save this plant, we would have to dig up this whole plant. But because of this um, viviparous habit that it has, 
instead of digging up this whole plant, we can just take a few of these uh, plantlets off of the mother plant and bring those inside. And this will give us a good start for next spring. There are a lot of great horticulture activities this time of year. Be sure and consider some of these events in the weeks ahead. Stay tuned next week on Oklahoma Gardening as we bring to you a larger than life show. You won't want to miss it. <laughs> so with that, you might try drying some flowers to help preserve, but I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> To find out more information about show topics as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure to visit our website at oklahomagardening.okstate.edu. Join in on Facebook and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. Tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater gem. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticulture Society, the Tulsa Garden Club, and the Tulsa Garden Center.